Good morning. Oops, am I on? Nope. Now we'll try it. Ha ha. I don't know. Maybe those batteries are going. Who knows? If they go, we'll, we'll just keep on moving. And there's a new backpack back there, so it'll be all right. Um, the New Hampton Trinity Youth are sponsoring today a chicken dinner from 11 till 1. It's a fundraiser for the youth that are that were planning to go to the big youth event, and I don't know now if they're just gearing up for the one in 2024 when they have announced now that it's going to be in New Orleans, or if they're going to participate in the optional alternative youth gathering that was canceled in Minneapolis, but our synod is still sponsoring a small little group that's going up or a smaller gathering, and um, some of the bigger churches have decided to go ahead and send their youth there too. So it makes it kind of nice that there's still some place for the ones that will be out, out of the age group by 2024, that there's still some, some place for them to go. So if you like chicken dinner, you could go there. I'm not sure what else is included in the chicken dinner, but it, it should be good. Um, later on this week, actually on Saturday, the 30th, Tyler and Lynn Edmiston are going to have their anniversary, so if you need to send them a card, you still have time to do that. And since um, we keep track of the birds that come to our bird feeder, which, I don't know, maybe a lot of people do that, but for sure we do, and we've noticed that in the last couple days, the juncos have left. That means spring is really here because the juncos went north. Yay! Just thought maybe that would be an exciting thing for you to know. Um, huh? I don't know, some weird bird that Lou can tell you all about it. So next time Lou's here, you ask him about juncos and he'll let you know. He's the bird expert. Um, I never really paid much attention to the birds until I got married to him, so... Um, but we have lots of, lots of birds that take its place. We have purple uh, wrens especially right now that are overtaking everybody that's there. But we received a thank you from the Synod office for um, our donation to the World Hunger. Um, Easter greetings from your Synod office. Uh, thank you for your faithful and generous response to God's love through your gifts to world, Lutheran World Hunger and to the ministry and work we do as a Synod. Grounded in Easter hope, you and I cannot walk away when there are hungry people in our communities and in our world. Thank you for the ways that you practice the art of loving just like Jesus. May this Easter season be full of new life, joy, and courageous kindness. And it's um, the new person that's in charge of all of this work, um, Pastor Liz, uh, is, uh, is the one that sent that from the office, and she also would like to come and visit sometime. So um, we'll have a guest preacher sometime for that, and I was also thinking of possibly seeing if the bishop was available to, to preach on the day that we have our, our big birthday party. So it's, uh, it's, you never know, we just might have some other people up here one of these days, so it'd be kind of fun. Liz is also the one that's in charge of a lot of the things that go on behind the scenes of candidacy, but not actually candidacy. Steve Brackett is still in charge of the, the candidacy parts itself. But um, since I'm moving into that last six months of everything needs to hurry up and get done, I've been doing a lot of finding things. And so my committees are going to be, be really busy the next few months and making a, make sure that the reports get done and and um, hopefully I get approved for ordination. So that would be really cool. Any of the other announcement is that next week we will have church council um, and, and Holy Communion and it's gonna be May Day and I never celebrated May Day with May baskets when I was growing up, but um, when we moved to town that changed. So uh, maybe some of you do May baskets. That, that would be fun to do. Um, but anyway, other than that, I don't have any other announcements. Please stand for the confession and forgiveness. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. You may be seated and we sing our first hymn, Christ is alive, let Christians sing. Christ is alive, let Christians sing the cross. to change my page on with setting 10 on page 203 the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also have mercy on us Lord and hear our solemn prayer
us, Lord, make sin and shame depart. Renew us with your saving power, create in us new hearts. Glory be to God in heaven, peace, goodwill to all the earth, mighty God of all creation, Father surpassing worth. We exalt you, we adore you, we lift high our thanks and praise. Saints and angels bow before you, here on earth our songs we raise. Glory be to Christ forever, Lamb of God and have come from heaven above. On the cross you died to save us, now you reign at God's right hand. Hear our prayer, restore, forgive us, in your promise firm we stand. Holy One, we Lord, alone to you we call. Holy One, in faith we name you, God most high yet near to all. Jesus Christ with God the Spirit, in the Father's splendor bright. For the peace that we inherit, glory be to God on high. We pray together the prayer of the day. O oh God of life, you reach out to us amid our fears with the wounded hands of your risen Son. By your Spirit's breath, revive our faith in your mercy and strengthen us to be the body of your Son. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading for today comes from the fifth chapter of Acts. When they had brought the apostles, they had them stand before the council, the high priest then questioned them, saying, We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name. Yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you are determined to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than any human authority. The God of our ancestors raised up Jesus, whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior that he might give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things. And so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The psalm for today is Psalm 118. You may respond with the bold print verses. The Lord is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. Shouts of rejoicing and salvation echo in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord indeed punished me sorely, but did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. 
I give thanks to you, for you have answered me, and you have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. By the Lord this has been done. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hosanna, O Lord, save us. We pray to you, Lord, prosper our days. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God and has given us light. Form a procession with branches up to the corners of the altar. You are my God, and I will thank you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he, the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. The second reading comes from the first chapter of Revelation, where John is writing to the seven churches that are in Asia. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and, is who, and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he's coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel. <clears throat> Hallelujah, Lord and Savior, open now your saving word. Let it burn like fire within us. Speak until our hearts are stirred. Alleluia, Lord, we sing for the good news that you bring. The Holy Gospel according to the 20th chapter of John. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked in fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, Jesus showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, the disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them this time. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. 
Praise to you, Christ. You may be seated. Grace, love, and peace to you from God, our Father, and from Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. This gospel was packed really full of emotions. It's like there was a teensy little bucket, and it kept putting more emotions in as you were reading along, and pretty soon it was overflowing and spilling all over. And it's still Easter evening, even though for us it's been a week since then. The disciples were locked inside a room, huddled together in fear. What if the authorities decided to come after them next? After all, they were the friends and the relatives of this Jesus, the Jesus, their Savior, who had just been killed. Maybe they were next. Maybe. And so we first notice the fear, the fear that they have restraining them and leaving, keeping them in that room huddled together. And then there's confusion and bewilderment. And it was just as thick as mud and was keeping the disciples mired inside that room, not knowing what to do. Exhaustion from lack of sleep because of worry and tears that had been wept and tears that were stored up for weeping later. Grief and sorrow that keeps the mind from being clear, It keeps your mind from remembering and understanding, keeps the mind in the state of chaos and turmoil, a feeling of kind of just being muddled up or being in a fog to the point of not being able to move, of being stuck. And for these men stuck inside the room, Even though Mary and the other women had come and witnessed to them and said, but Jesus has risen, he's alive. They still had their doubts. They still weren't sure they believed. And all these emotions together, the fear, the confusion, the bewilderment, the exhaustion, the grief, the sorrow, piled and piled and piled into that tiny little place. Wondering, wondering if the world would ever again resemble what it once did. Would it ever be back to where it had been? Much like we kind of consider that every so often too with this crazy virus. Is it ever going to be back to where it was before? Maybe not. But for the disciples, they were hoping And then suddenly Jesus was there with them, pronouncing the greeting of peace. And with this gift of peace, Jesus commissions the disciples to go out into the world and proclaim the Easter good news of resurrection by breathing on them. The Greek translation of that word for Jesus breathing on the disciples is the same word that is used at the very beginning of the the Genesis text in the creation of man, when God breathed and created man. And in so doing, then, Jesus is giving new life to his disciples and sending them out with the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, we know that one of the disciples wasn't there. Thomas just wasn't with them that that day. We don't really know what was going on that evening that he wasn't there. But when he arrived later on that that day or evening, and the disciples announced that they had seen the Lord, he was kind of skeptical. But Thomas was also honest. I think he's gotten kind of a bad rap being called Doubting Thomas. He's more like the honest Thomas. Because he was honest about his feelings, honest about his disbelief, honest enough to say, I need proof. So he would eventually know the truth. So he wouldn't get his hopes up and just to be let down again. And he expressed his doubts fully, his uncertainty, 
And he actually became our witness. Because we also have uncertainties. We have our doubts. It doesn't mean that God isn't with us or that we don't believe. It's just that sometimes, just like Thomas, we kind of forget. And what we need to do is be willing to ask the questions and acknowledge that we need to continue to learn and deepen our relationship with God so that we can maybe help get through this doubtfulness, this uncertainty. But it certainly is okay to have some. Now a week later, Jesus came back to where the disciples were. This time Thomas was there. And rather than have Thomas take the word of the other disciples, Jesus returned to actually offer him the same privilege that he'd given all the others. To see and to touch and to have Jesus meet him right there where Thomas was in his uncertainty and give him the proof that he needed to provide him peace. Because Jesus was truly human while he was here on earth, Jesus understands and all this messy stuff that goes on in our life. How it can be overwhelming, confusing, and painful, and walks with us through all those weird feelings and emotions. So it's really nice that through that messy, we know that Jesus is here, walking right here with us, sharing our hurts and our pains and our sorrows, our doubts, our feelings, and our emotions. So Jesus wants us to share them with other people so that there is more than just you walking by yourself with Jesus. There's other people that can help you as you walk along. Maybe not the whole community of whoever is in our congregation, but at least with your pastor, and your Savior. Make sure that Jesus knows what you're doing, what you're walking through. How are you feeling? Allow someone else to walk with you during that time of messiness in your life. To hold your hand along with God as you go through all those difficult times. Just as Jesus confessed, Jesus is Lord and Savior. We can be blessed in our belief and tell everyone we see that Jesus died for us. Jesus was resurrected for us. Jesus is our Lord and our Savior. Jesus is risen for us all. Alleluia. Amen. And we're going to sing the risen Christ.
souls oppressed in this and every land. This all are blessed and can a blessing be restored in Christ to true humanity. Please stand as together with all the Church of Christ we confess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. Holy One who acts righteously, equip your church as witnesses of your goodness to go and tell others of your abundant love, that they may believe that Jesus is our salvation and life. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Renew your people's commitment to use resources responsibly and to live well with your creation. Invite us to recognize and nurture signs of resurrection life and in the natural world. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Direct those who are given human authority to lead with humility and compassion. By your Holy Spirit, channel their attention towards serving those who are most in need. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Uphold your children who cry out to you, especially we pray for the people in the Ukraine. Wherever people are overcome by the fear of death, breathe into them your life and peace. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Inspire those who lead your people in worship and praise, especially the, the music ministries of this congregation. With joyful motion and sound, send us forth with praise that we cannot keep to ourselves. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bring calmness and peace, healing and wholeness, comfort and awareness of your presence to all who need to feel you near. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us the words of your saints who, like Thomas, boldly confessed your Son as Lord and God. With Jesus, our leader, empower us to live according to his ways. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all and also with you. Please remain standing as we receive our offering. Let us pray. Living God, you gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in your peaceable reign, and you welcome us all, all people,
to em- endure and to go on. Reach us out, reach out to us now through this meal and show us your wounded and risen body that we may be nourished and believe in and trust in Jesus Christ as our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and with mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. And we sing. Go, my children. Go, my children, with my blessing. Peace.